Taking everything into consideration, I, uh, I find the prospect very attractive. Yes, very attractive. As for the other business, I am regarding it very closely. But of course, I always have an eye for anything interesting in silk. Silk, Mr. Forbes? Uh, I mean clothes. My thoughts were wandering. No wonder, Mr. Forbes, with all that you have on your mind. Great. Yes. It's a bit of a job to keep your head paid some days. But there, if we all had the same amount of brains, there wouldn't be any working classes. Oh, dear. I do wish that A understood this clove business, Mr. Forbes. Why, well, it's quite simple, my dear. Come over here. Mm -hmm. You see, clothes grow round about the West Indies. Yeah. Now, all the world wants clothes, and only the West Indies have them. So if May Syndicate succeed in buying the whole of this year's crop, the rest of the world must buy their clothes from us. Oh, I see. But won't the other people be upset when they find out? Well, that's the fun of it. They'll think I'm a smart fellow and put my picture in the papers, and I shall be making a fortune out of them. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I see. <laughs> yes. 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 Oh. Oh, it's, it's no good, sir. Well, it was your idea, Parson. Yes, I know, sir. It's unethical and rough. Well, what can we do? We can't go home with that asthmatical old walrus in possession. Look, sir. Otto Forbes financier. A coincidence and an inspiration. Throw yourself on his mercy, sir. Not for a million of his millions. But we must regain your father's confidence and your reliance. But how? My dear, sir. Is it as good as this one? Well, superior, so far superior. Your father likes music. Uh -huh. You want your alliance, Dad. Well? Well, you wish you would start composing, sir. Write beautiful music. Make your father proud of you. Composing? I couldn't carry a tune in a bag. Leave it all to me, sir. Leave it all to me. In two days' time, we'll send for your father, where he sees the beautiful music you've written. Leave it all to me, sir. Leave it all to me. Yes, sir. You're a funny fellow, aren't you? I don't want to talk to you. This is that. Oh, go away. And that's this. Sonata by Ludwig von Beethoven. And it's turned into Opus 233 by James Forbes. the two nasty scratches on this piano. How much do young Forbes give for it? Mr. Forbes to you. Nah, then, nah, then. Don't forget you're talking to an officer of the court in the execution of his duty. With all what that implies. Get out. Out of him. He passes. I should say so. Oh, have a heart then. Shall we knock him out, sir? No, I'll jump on him and you hit him. Now nah, then. He's like trying a pound. On the bill or in the hand? In the hand. Hand. A pound, sir. A pound. Quick, a, a, a pound. pound. A pound. Quick, a quick. A pound. Here, what? Yeah, what's going on here? I'm not sure. What do you mean, sir? You've been a long time opening the door, haven't you? No, no, no. Mr. Forbes is in there, sir. 
Hello, my boy. Hello, Dad. This is a surprise. How are you, my boy? Busy? Oh, just a little something I'm on at the moment. Oh, yes. <laughs> What's that? Uh, uh, that's a friend of Parsons. Nasty golf? Uh, yes, he, he isn't a very nice man. You ought to be a bit more on a cart in choosing your friends, as they say in France. Well, he's not, 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 not a very close friend, sir. Uh, shall I take your hat, sir? No. Is there anything I can get you, sir? No, thank you. Thank you, sir. I'm only staying a few minutes. Oh, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> you better tell that man of yours to send his friend away, Angel. Uh, yes, well, I, I, uh, I don't want to hurt his feelings. All right, you know best. Nettie little place you got here. It's very expensive to keep up. Yes, you're right, dear. <laughs> and that reminds me, I... Uh... That's all right, my boy. We'll attend to that before I go. A few pounds here and there doesn't matter, as long as you're doing something. Yes, Father. I suppose I must be getting you a bit of publicity soon. Yes, Father. Yes. We'll set one or two nice photos down and I'll get them in. Is that necessary? There's no use hiding your light under a bushel, my boy. A composer's something out of the ordinary. A bit of class. But I don't look like a composer. Well, it was let your hair grow. After all, a policeman doesn't look like a policeman without his helmet, do he? I mean, does he? <laughs> no. Well, my boy. What have you got to show me? The bills are in the bureau, sir. We'll look after the bills, all right. But how much music have you done? Uh, oh, about a hundredweight. That's a funny way to talk about music, isn't it? Uh, yes, He's sir. over here, sir. I'll show you. Allow me. Here you are, sir. Oh. Well, did you write all that, lot? Uh, well, uh, I... Uh, I did the writing, sir. Mr. Forbes supplied the... Uh, I get you. You did the manual work and my son supplied the brains. Uh, that is correct, sir. Yes. Uh, well, let's have a look at it a bit. Here you are, sir. No, no. We'll have one from the middle of the back. Rhapsody Sportive by James. Hmm. Bit of a foreign touch. But where are the words? Oh, I'm afraid there aren't any words to it. What's the tune? Well, if I could play the piano, I'd play it to you. Well, go on, hum it. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid I don't hum very well. No. Can the men you'll labour to play? Unfortunately, sir, no. Well, if you can't play and you can't hum it, how do you know what it's like? Uh, well, you see, Father... Your son has a little in common with a great Beethoven, sir, who wrote the most superb music, but couldn't hear a note. Yes, there's something in that. <laughs> ah, what about your musical friend in there? Can he play? I'm afraid not, sir. Ah, we'll have him out and ask him. Uh, Come on. Yes, but, Father, I... Hi, uh, I... you, whatever your name is. Come in here. Right, I've got that. Well, sir... What can I do for you, sir? I must ask you, sir, to excuse a certain that's amount of... That's all right, that's all right. No familiarities, my good fellow. I'm sorry, sir. Can you play the piano? Well, sir, I can pick out a tune I dare say. Well, see what you can pick out of this, will you? Very good, sir. And so on, at Equiscutum, as they say in the classics. Go on, up it. What you are, Governor? Ah, what you might call a feast of music, isn't it? Only somebody else thought of it first. And it wasn't written yesterday. It will only let me explain, sir. I get my boy. You're not the first one to try to make a fool of me. But you'd be the first one to get away with it if you did. Well, Father I, Parsons has tried to explain. Never mind about Parsons. Besides, you won't need him in future. But, but, but I can't, I can't carry on without Parsons. Oh, can't you? But you don't need much help to compose John Peel, etc. Yeah. And now I come to think of it, it struck me the time that this call for music came a bit sudden-like. Very, well, very good try. Goodbye and good luck to you. Sir, sir, you, you must listen to me. This is a question of technique. You can't play a rhapsody on one finger. We know it was John Peel. Well, who don't? Oh, just one second, sir. Uh, you must listen to Parsons, father. There's more in this than meets the eye, sir. All the ear. You see, it's John Peel from here to here. Well, what's the rest well, of it? Well, that's just the point, sir. It's an original treatment for the opening theme, scored for orchestra. It doesn't sound like anything on the piano. Yes, you're right there. You see, sir, here it comes to the diatonic dial Parsons. And Parsons on the homophonic duet between clarinet and oboe, with, with percussion, of course, and reaches the climax in the finale with contrapuntal dissonance. Contra how much? You can't judge without the band parts, sir. Well, where are they? Oh, well, we never do those unless they're needed. Ah, well, now's the time to do them, as you haven't wang allowance. What? Yes, I thought that'd make you sit up, but why should you worry? I mean, you've written and told me how good your music is. Well, now's the time to publish it. Composers make fortunes, don't they, Parsons? 
All you've got to do is to write your band fast, get a band to play them, and you'll have a Rolls Royce in no time. Contra disco punters is punk. What you mean is punk and counterpunk. You've done a fine thing, you have. Well, what are we going to do for money? The bookmaker's getting nasty, there's that man in there, and all this, rent and parties. <laughs> Now, from the state of the profit and loss account, I will conclude this meeting by saying that we have every reason to congratulate ourselves. Yeah. That the bread we have cast upon the waters has come back well buttered. I say, I say. Well, shall we say that the cake has come back well filled with plums? <laughs> oh, stick to the agenda, man. We're discussing finance, not fruit. You'll have something else to discuss if you're not careful. What's that? Uh, I, I think we ought to conclude the meeting with a vote of thanks to our able chairman. Yeah. Yeah. And a special vote of thanks for the very able way he has guided our interests. Yeah. Or as my friend Lord Hornchurch would observe, snuff to the nose that smells the profit. Surely I indicated the best deal of the year, Forbes. Then shall we say, may your smell grow stronger and stronger. Don't be so confoundedly familiar, sir. I wish you all good day, gentlemen. <coughs> Half a mo. You're taking this election campaign too much to heart, don't you think? Look after your own heart, sir. I wish some of the electors could see you now. It'll be worth a lot of votes to me. Thank goodness the name Sir Charles Rimmer stands for something more than money. If you're trying to make me lose my temper, you're not succeeding very well. I don't care about your temper. When I'm in Parliament... Yes, up in the Strangers' Gallery, listen to me on the floor of the House. The well, Public House would be more your line. And you'd look well behind the bar, wouldn't you, eh? <laughs> <laughs> You're a conceited jackass. Now look here, Rimmer. I've had about enough of your old buck. Don't talk your slang to me. I was about to ask if we're going to conduct this campaign like gentlemen. I can see it's not necessary. Don't you flatter yourself. It takes something more than money to make a gentleman. Well, how much it take to make a knight? That's the sort of cheap jibe I should expect from you. But the electors aren't fools. When I'm addressing my meeting, my voters realize they're listening to a man of breed. A man of quality, sir. Quality. You pump yourself. Oh, uh, did I did I hear hay voices in the corridor, Mr. Forbes? Or was I mistaken? I must say it's very nice to step into the refined atmosphere of one's own office after some of the people one meets. <laughs> I see Lady Tuvas popped in. Oh, yes, she's waiting for you in your private office, Mr. Forbes. Oh, yes. You know, my dear Miss Mason, I think it would be as well to have these things put on a silver saliva, don't you? <laughs> Could you possibly be meaning silver salva, Mr. Forbes? Well, there are two readings, you know. In the original Greek, I believe it was saliva, but let that pass. <laughs> Ah, my dear Lady Tuva. No, no, don't get up, please. And you brought your charming daughter with you. Well, well. Do you mind waiting outside for me for a moment? All right. Dear child. Charming girl. Oh, it's so chic, isn't she? <laughs> you know, she was so anxious to come with me today. Yes, I noticed it. How much longer, Mother? Just coming, darling. Well, goodbye, Mr. Forbes. <laughs> oh, how silly of me. Do you know, I came here specially to ask you if, uh, if you could give me a little tip. Well, I don't usually give tips, you know. But seeing it's you, <laughs> can you keep a secret? Oh, yes. Do you like space? No, no, I don't mean what you mean. I mean clothes. Clothes? Yes, the things you use for space. It might be worthwhile paying a few hundred weight for forward delivery, but not a word made. Oh, thank you, Mr. Forbes. Thank you. You financial men are always so beautifully mysterious. And you, my dear Lady Tuva, are so mysteriously beautiful. <laughs> yes. 
And afraid you've had an awfully long wait, Lady Tuva. It was worth it. I'm sure it was. Well, open the gates, then. <clears throat> Thank you. Yes. I don't feel like it. It's that girl on your mind. Oh, why did I go to Switzerland? Why did I tell her a lot of lies? Well, why did you? I was in love with her. Her father was rich. I had to let her think I was rich too. I never thought I'd see her again. Shouldn't put your address in the paper. Oh, why didn't I think of that before and use a box number? I wonder. There she is. Bastian. Bastian, tell her, tell her I'm out. You tell her your own lies. Oh, uh, are you Billy Todd? No, thank you. Well, what can I do for you, gentlemen? Oh, my name's Parsons. Uh, oh, his name's Parsons. I'm his man for. Allow me, sir. We want some music written. Uh, do you think we ought to come to the point at once? Wouldn't it be better if we had a little chat first? Oh, you're, you're offering me a commission. Uh, now, what fee had you in mind? Well, uh, oh, Parsons usually does that for me. Uh, that can be arranged in due course. Well, in that case, I have the very thing. Now, here is a little something ready-made. A poem without words. An idyll with the first stirrings of a newborn passion in the bass. We would like a little something put to that. Yes, just a little something. Oh, yes. <laughs> what is this? That, that, that was a little of my own to fill in space. Your own? In other words, uh, that was the work Mr. Forbes made me do to deceive his father. Yes, uh, and Parsons wasn't quite up to it. Oh, I see. You, you, you want me to do an arrangement on this theme? For orchestra. Well, you can become to a better man. Music is my life. I bubble with it. I'm a musical spring, a cacophonic fountain. Uh, good. And then you can put my name to it. <laughs> you put your name to my music? You expect me to degrade my art? But, of course, uh, one has to make sacrifices. Now, how about something... Uh, like this. So this is the entrance to the marvellous studio. The fine old staircase with the oriental carvings. I he was pony in Switzerland. Billy Todd? Oh, well, why? If it isn't Jane. So this is where you live, surrounded by beautiful things. <laughs> old masters, Persian rugs, valuable antiques, priceless old china. What makes me so furious is to think that I was fool enough to believe you. I was fascinated by you. I knew you wouldn't look at me if I told you the truth. So well, I pretended to be rich. Who are you? Uh, don't you know me, Jane? No. Who are you? Um, I'm Jimmy Forbes. I met you at a party. Oh. Yes, that's right. Well, then your father's the man my father hates so much. <laughs> yeah. I was wondering if you were going to stay here long. Stay here? Oh, don't be funny. I'm going home for dinner. But, oh, miss, uh, miss, uh, perhaps you would like Mr. Forbes to see you home. Well, that's an idea. All right, why not? <laughs> Jane, you, you, you can't leave me like this. Can't I? Oh, now, you stay with Parsons and have a nice chat uh, about music. Thank you so much for bringing me home. It was jolly, wasn't it? Mm. Goodbye. Oh, I say, you're not going, are you? C can't we meet again sometime? I'd like to. Look out. Hello, Jane, what are you doing out here? Well, well you see, I, I brought her well, home. Don't keep her friend standing on the pavement. When a young man brings you home, bring him inside. Uh, yes, but you see... I don't I... argue, young man. Go on, in, in you get. Come on. <clears throat> My new gramophone records. <laughs> Do you like Caesar Frank? Uh, I've never met him. Of course you haven't. He's dead. Oh. Uh, father means Caesar Frank the composer. Uh, oh, yes. He's dead. Uh, this is a recording of his masterpiece, Symphonic Variations. Marvellous. Haven't you heard it? Uh, I'm afraid I don't understand much about music. Oh, then you miss one of the greatest joys in life, my boy. Everybody should understand music. Everybody. However, it's always playing it if you don't like music. 
Uh, Jane, give your friend a drink. Pour one out for me, too. Any news about the government, Daddy? Well, I'm not sure I'm so keen on standing as I was. Politics aren't what they were. Besides, it's better against that confounded fellow Forbes, too. Ah, no gentleman. Don't you start running him down now. Why not? The fellow's no gentleman, never will be. If he hadn't inherited money, he'd be on the dole by now. Please? Ah, thank you. Well, here's your very good health. What do you say your name was? A Forbes. Oh, one of the Colombo Forbes? Uh, no, one of the Ottos. Ottos? Yes, my name's Jimmy. Then kindly get out of my house at once, sir. Father, you can't talk to my friends Can't like I? That. We'll see. Go on, out you go. Out of my house. Johnson's always been outside. Don't you think I have enough of Forbes at offices and board meetings? Must I have Forbes in my own home too? Where do you meet him? I shan't tell you. I demand to know. I refuse to tell you. I'm old enough to manage my own affairs. I forbid you to ever see this Forbes again. Ah, oh, good morning, Sir Charles. A lovely morning, isn't it? Never mind about that. Is Mr. Forbes in? Oh, have you an appointment? I don't need an appointment for what I want to say to him. Now then, sir. Oh, it's you, is it? A week ago, I kicked your son out of my house. Well, in that case, it serves him right for being there. He was hanging about after my daughter. Don't you believe it? Very well, sir. Read this. He came to my house this morning. How would you like to meet me at the Phoenix at four o'clock? Lots of fun, Jimmy. Now then. Will you tell your daughter to leave my son alone? Have you the impertinence to suggest that my daughter wants your son? Oh, that outsider. Now, look here, Emma. One of these days, you're going to get a packet. I read the other day that he was a composer. <laughs> He's nothing but an imposter, sir. What? Your son is an imposter. You're jealous because you haven't got a son, aren't you? We'll let that pass. And I want to tell you one thing. If your son comes round to my house again, I'll horse with him. Well, if he doesn't know any better than to go to your house, I'll horse with him, too. His daughter. <laughs> oh, by the way, there was another letter from your son today, Mr. Forbes. Well, tear it up. What beats me is how a man like me could have a son like him. Oh, Mr. Forbes, it doesn't always follow that a clever man should have a clever son. <laughs> no, there's something in that. However, he upsets old Rimmer more than he does me. That's some consolation. Hello, yes. Uh, no, Mr. Forbes is not in. Uh, no. Look here, if my father won't answer the phone, won't answer my letters and won't see me, how am I going to get in touch with him? Those are my orders. But I must see him. Uh, tell him he's doing me a cruel injustice, that I'm his only son. Uh, tell him that, uh, that I... Uh, I say, hello, hello. I uh, don't you... Parsons, she's cut me off again. So I gather, sir. They've cut off the water, too, and the gas, and the light. We're, we're, we're cut off all round, sir. And um, perhaps you'll tell me how to cut myself something off this. Get out of here. With pleasure. Seven days' possession of six bob a day equals 42 bob, plus 60 pounds, four and tuppence. Get out before I do something desperate. All right, Governor. Good. Uh... Now there's this. Never a dull moment, sir. I can't stand it. <laughs> Can't you do something about it? Well, I'm, I'm getting the dipper, sir. No, don't you start. Let's go out and brain that man with his trumpet, and then come back and murder the broker's man. Pull yourself together. Very good, sir. Very good. Oh, listen, sir. Listen, listen. That's listen. all right. Go out and give him sixpence and tell him to go away. Never mind. I'll do it myself. Wait a minute, sir. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Calm yourself. Everything's going to be all right. That man, sir. That man. I'll attend to him. He's an answer to a prayer, sir. Of course he is, my <laughs> poor Parsons. But, now just sit down and keep calm. But don't you see, sir, that man? We didn't ask him to come here. We wouldn't. Yet he came. What do we do? We pay him to go away. Would your father pay us to go away? We want you to get an orchestra together, a huge orchestra, and come to Aldwych House and play outside the office of Otto Forbes, financier. Play the loudest piece of music you can on the loudest instruments. Outside the offices? <laughs> They'd never let us in. Oh, they'll let you in, all right. Disguise yourselves as gentlemen, you know, bowler hats and that sort of thing. Somebody's mad. Uh, yes, but that's all right. It, it isn't you. What's that? I believe it's a bend in our corridor. What are they playing? Like some sort of a medley to me. It sounds like gone to disco pantalus to me. Stop! Take that punk away. Oh, Dad. 
These are officers, sir. Officers. And this is my office. You get out of it. Send these people away at once. You send them away yourself. Ah, you're doing this to annoy me, Forbes. I know you. You're flaunting that confounded son of yours in my face. But you're going too far, Forbes. You're going too far. If you don't get out of my office at once, I'll have you thrown out, head first. Don't you dare to threaten me, sir. I'm not the sort of man to be bullied. Do you think I want a band to play in the office? Yes, but you can't do it. You can't do it. You've got me to reckon with. Now, look here, Emma. If I did want a band to play to me, I'd have it. And it would take more than you to stop me. If those fellows aren't out of that corridor in ten seconds, I'll have them thrown out. Now, what have you got to say to that? I'll show you what I've got to say to that. Hi, hey, Jimmy! Take them all in there. What, in there? Yes, in there. Oh, yeah, you can't do that. Oh, can't I? Go on, in you go. Oh, oh, look here. Here. Uh, hurry, hurry. A lot depends on this. Go on, get, get going. Come on, now, get back. Come on, stay right back here. I don't believe there is such an expression. Oh, yes, there is, Rima. And what's more, you look like one. You can't make that noise in Mr. Forbes's office. It isn't a noise. Rhapsody, Sportive, Mayor James Forbes. But I understood from your father. Yes, I know, but father doesn't understand it himself. Yet. So now you know. I have never heard such a revolting flow of language in all my life. Well, I'm pretty good at a lot of things you don't know about. Uh. Excuse me, sir. This one do. Go on, up it. Mr. Forbes. I think it's beautiful. Well, I must say it's better than I expected. Uh, I knew you'd like it. Oh, did you? Oh, the sound of his horn brought me from my bed. Oh, the sound of his horn brought me from my bed. And the cry of his hounds, which he oft times led. Get the band out of here, sir, before he asks for anything else. Right. Come on, fellas, get come your on, hats on, and let's go. Come on, come on. Well, Rimmer, what about that? I am writing to the police. Well, while you're about it, make a note of that. Rhapsody Sportive by James Forbes Rot. Yes, that shows what you know about music. That's full of cold and that is. That jackass can't write music? Don't you call my son a jackass. He told me himself he doesn't understand music. Uh, sounded like it, didn't it? He said to it in my own house. You're jealous, that's what you are, Rimmer. Jealous. And you haven't got the guts to admit it. I say, you can't do that. Excuse me. I say, Dad, can I have a word with you? That's all right, my boy. There'll be a nice little something for you in the post tonight. Oh, thank you, Dad. Uh, but it's about... Now, you tell these fellas all about it. And get yourself some publicity. You can say that Mr. Otto Forbes has had a very pleasant surprise. Uh, yes, but Dad, you see... How about taking one of father and son, eh? I'm just delighted, sir. Carry on, my boy. Oh, just one moment, please, Mr. Forbes. I just wanted to... I don't think you ought to say anything more now, sir. No, I don't think I ought to say anything more now. Please, Mr. Forbes, you see it. I just said that some other time would be delighted. Just give me a lunch just now. Some other time would be delighted. Oh, Mr. Forbes, I do think your son's most awfully clever. Well, so he ought to be. If there's anything in heredity... Parsons. We've got to be very careful. We've gone too far for care, sir. O old Rimmer doesn't believe us. Don't forget his daughter saw us with Billy Todd. Oh, so she did. Uh, uh, don't you think I ought to get hold of her and stop her from talking? Yes, I, I think you're better, sir. Yes, it was 4042, wasn't it? Yes, that's right, sir. Yes, 4042. Oh, 
Hello? How do you know it isn't for me? It is. Forbes' son. For the third time in a quarter of an hour. Understand, my daughter doesn't wish to speak to you again. Oh, yes, I do. Oh, no, you don't. Father, why do you treat me like a child? Because I'm determined to keep you away from that imposter. Oh, he's not an imposter. Oh? Then what's the meaning of this? Mr. Otto Forbes, the financier, and his composer son. Even you can't believe that. How do you know? Because he told me in this house only last week that he didn't understand music. If I can only find out the truth about this music that he pretends his son writes, I can annihilate him at one blow. In fact, your heart's just brimming over with a milk of human kindness. I'd give a great deal of money for some information about that music. Come in. Well, what do you want? May I speak to you, sir? What about? I heard you speaking to Miss Jane about young Mr. Forbes. I'm not the habit of discussing my family affairs with my servants. Very good, sir. Still, of course, if you've got anything of importance to say, I... It's about the music young Mr. Forbes is supposed to be writing. Supposed, did you say? Supposed? What do you know about it? I believe I know the real composer. We must attract her attention, Parsons. Can you make a noise like a cat? I very much doubt it, sir. Well, I'll try. Why not try something a little simpler first, sir? I say, I'm awfully sorry. Parsons gave me the wrong stone. My father's downstairs. But I must see you. How can you come up here? Ooh, ooh, Jane doesn't know me when my mind's made up, does she, Parsons? No, sir. I shall have to show her, won't I, Parsons? Yes, sir. Listen, Jimmy, is there something funny about this music of yours? I should say there is. Oh, but I mustn't forget what I came to see you about. But I thought you came to see me because you couldn't stay away from me. Oh, no. Yes, of course, but uh, I came to see you about Billy Todd, too. Oh, that outsider. Yes, I know you don't like him and all that, but you see, your father's a bit suspicious about that music I'm supposed to have written. Supposed to, yes, you see, I can't write music. That's Billy Todd. If your father knew I met you at Billy Todd's, he'd put two and two together and make a devil of a lot of it. Oh. Now, let's get this clear. Billy Todd's writing the music that you're supposed to write. Yes, but don't ask me why. You must get friendly with this Todd. With care, of course. I know my way about, sir. Oh, do you? Another glass of sherry? No, thank you, sir. Ah, well, if you can bring me proof that what you say is correct, there'll be a nice fat check waiting for you. Thank you, sir. Come in. Excuse me, sir, there's something peculiar going on in Miss Jane's bedroom. A young man's been climbing up the ivy. What? You don't mind? Rather impulsive, aren't you? Yes, very. I say, wouldn't Father be angry if you could see us now? <laughs> don't worry about him. Oh! Oh! oh. oh. Uh -huh. The name of Forbes is beginning to mean something, Miss Mason. Yes. Otto Forbes, the Clove King. <laughs> yes, and what's more, we caught one or two of them napping. Dear, dear, isn't it exciting? My brokers are still buying cloves, you know. And of course, the more you buy now, the more money you'll make. Great. And the more the sellers will lose. They can sell them to me on paper, but when it comes to the actual cloves, they've got to buy them from me before they can sell them to me. And what they don't realize is that I've got the whole lot. And when they have to buy to meet their commitments, then we'll see the price they have to pay. We'll give them clothes. <laughs> Mr. Forbes, I, I wonder if you think I'm as silly if I say something. Not at all. Well, supposing that more people sold clothes. I mean, lots of people and lots of clothes. Well, let them all come. We're buying everything. Now, that's just the point. Supposing that the papers printed a few little paragraphs like this. Oh, I do hope you won't think I'm a silly girl to say it. We all have to learn. Well, 
cable from Zanzibar to Otto Forbes, London. Urgent and confidential. Yes? Clove situation perilous. Had discovered hidden reserves equal year supply. Advise sell before market breaks. Signed, calendar. Where did that come from? I invented it. Hey? Oh. <laughs> I thought that if this got into the papers, people would think that it was true. And then they'd go on selling away, and you could go on buying away. Yes, and buy myself a nice front seat in the Old Bailey. Oh, I, I hadn't thought about that, Mr. Forbes. My dear Miss Mason, it's the old story, you know. A nice girl like you doesn't have to be clever. <laughs> Mr. Forbes. <laughs> Well, sir? Now we're in a jam. We've got to get more music. Oh, that's all right, sir. Leave it all to me. Let's have some of your music. Is this a nice little piece? A nice little piece? It's a beautiful work. A tango. With the first stirrings of a newborn passion in the bass. Ooh, uh. I'll play it to you. Uh, you listen to this. Who's there? see me here, I shall get into terrible trouble with Jane Rimmer. Uh, uh, one moment. Isn't there another way out? Shh, it's quite all right. Don't you worry. Come along and hide over here. I'll get rid of him. Hello. Uh, we've come for a little more music. Shh, shh. I, I have a visitor. A, a lady. That's all right. Pass and look. Will you pass us? We are the soul of discretion, sir. But where can we go for a chat? I know a nice little... You go there. Very good, sir. Shh. I'm afraid you'll have to wait, Mr. Naysbeth. Mr. Forbes is engaged. You kindly tell him I want to see him at once. Mind you, if you don't, Mr. Forbes will be very angry with you when he finds out. Mr. Forbes understands me perfectly. Oh. Nevertheless, I will ask him. Thank you. Forbes will see you at five o'clock. Thanks. I don't think I'll bother now. But you said it was very important. Yes, it was, and it is. Perhaps even more important than I thought. <laughs> yes, but don't you try to think it out, my dear girl. You, you wouldn't understand. Good day. before never to disturb me between the hours of two and three? It's Mr. Naysby, sir. He says his business is most urgent. Oh, well, keep him busy till I ring. Uh, yes. Tell him I have a most important phone conversation. Uh, very good, sir. Sir Charles will see you in a moment, sir. Hmm. Signed, calendar. A quick eye and a good memory, Higgs. Very valuable. Send Mr. Naysby at once, please. <coughs> ah, Sir Charles. Sir Naysby. I think you'll find my business will explain itself. No, oh, thank you. Where'd you get this? It's a copy of a cable lying in Forbes' office at this moment. I have a quick eye for the top of the desk, Sir Charles. Good heavens, man. Forbes is cornering cloves. If this cable's right, then the market will go right down. Forbes will lose a pile of money. Does anybody else know about this? Hardly the sort of information he'd let out of his own office. If we start selling at once, he'll have to buy to keep the price up. Why, Naseby will beat him in his own game. We'll break him. But why are you telling me this? Well, you see, uh, little fish must swim with big fish. I shall look to you for 20% of all profits made. Yes, yes, you have my word. No, no. Keep on selling till I tell you to stop. I can't help that buy them. Keep on buying. As long as they keep on buying, you keep on selling. I'm still buying. Go on, buy them. Yes, yes. Keep on selling till I tell you to stop. Go on, buy them, buy them, buy them. Sell, sell. Go on, buy them. Sell. Buy. Sell. Buy them. Mr. 
Mr. Forbes is not in, and there is no communication to the place. I, I can't tell you that at all. Oh, excuse me. Oh, Mr. Forbes, I'm sure you'd like to say something about these club rumours. You can say it's bunkum. You've seen our paper this morning, Mr. Forbes? A lot of rot. But I'm sure you'd like to give us a full statement. You can say that I've got the whole of this year's crop of clothes. And if anybody's been selling short, they're going to catch it in the neck. Well, what are these rumours about the sellers knowing something? I don't want to hear any rumours. That's all I've got to say. Hello? Yes, one moment, please. Yep. Otto Forbes speaking. Oh, another newspaper. Well, go down. Ah, Nancy, I see there's quite a lot of press interest in Forbes this morning. <laughs> Yes, I dropped some very good hints, and now we're already waiting for the bombshell. Yes, what pleases me is that Forbes hasn't the slightest idea that I'm the man he's up against. <laughs> it must cost him an effort to wear that unconcerned look of his. Oh, he's plucky, Sir Charles. He bought up all the parcels of clothes you offered on the market. Well, he had to. His own fortune at stake. He's got to unload his own stuff, so he simply can't afford to allow prices to drop. No, he'll be feeling better now you stop selling. Mm, you're an artful fellow, Naseby. <laughs> and once that cable's published, there'll be a rush of selling orders all round. The price of clothes will go down and down, and then we'll buy. And Forbes will have to take them off us at the very price he's already bought them at. And he won't know it's you until his money's in your bank. <laughs> That'll make him sit up. <laughs> Come in. It's great to see you, sir. It's all right, Naseby. Stay where you are. Hmm. Ah, Lillian. I tried to see you before breakfast, sir, but I couldn't get away from Miss Jane. Well, what have you got? This is the original of the tango I told you about. Ah, Dolores by Billy Todd. Ah, you've done very well, Lillian. I'll see you about this later. Meantime, not a word. You can trust me, sir. Something interesting? I've beaten Forbes financially. Now I'm going to wipe him out. Annihilate him socially. <sighs> Music, eh? This young fellow's an imposter. His father's encouraging him. I'm going to expose them both. Then, Mr. Forbes, is somebody still selling clothes? No. Whoever it was stopped selling yesterday. My book has bought up everything as soon as it was offered. <laughs> the place hasn't gone down a penny. We've won. Sorry to keep bothering you, Mr. Forbes. What do you mean by coming to my office like this? Get out of it. Just one statement and we won't bother you anymore. Off it. You know, my dear Miss Mason, that's the worst of being in the public eye. Eh? One's never alone. Oh, I know the feeling so well. One longs for the privacy of one's own bathroom. Eh? Oh, no. But really, Mr. Forbes, that is an idea. Why don't you try a Turkish bath? A Turkish bath? They say they're very quiet and peaceful. Well, I've often wondered what they were like. But aren't some of the compartments faithfully hot? Oh, no doubt they have cooler compartments for cooler people. <laughs> I think I will try one. anything, sir? Yes. Where are the balls? Uh, which balls, sir? Oh, the usual cane, you know. H and C. Oh, uh, the humidarium is there, sir. This is the frigidarium. Yes. There, the tepidarium. That is the canadarium. And so through into the radiarium. I see. Not to mention the honorarium. <laughs> I see you looking so depressed, Forbes. Cheer up. Oh, it's you, is it? 
Yes, it's been a morning of petty annoyances, remember? Uh -huh. Well, I'm glad to know it's nothing serious. Oh, I see you've been reading the papers. Why don't you boys go away? Why don't you be a good girl and tell us the news? Nothing doing. I'm not going to tell you anything. Well, tell me one thing. When did Forbes receive this cable? What cable? Clove situation perilous. Have discovered hidden year supply. Advise sell before market breaks. Calendar. Mr. Forbes didn't get that cable. Oh, that's funny. I've got a copy of it. What are you laughing at? Well, I thought it sounded familiar. Is this the message? Yes, that's it. Well, come on, give us the dope. That isn't the cable. I wrote that. What do you mean you wrote it? I just had a silly idea and I wrote it out for fun. So you're the sort of girl that writes things for fun? Or did Forbes get you to write it thinking we'd print it in fun? Does Forbes know about this? Well, of course he does. I told him. And he let it get to us. I see. Fooling the press. We'll see about this. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Somebody's got to be in the soup over all this silly business. <laughs> you think so? I know it. Mm. <laughs> well, perhaps the other fellow thinks otherwise. He'll learn. Yes, yeah, that's true. We all have to live and learn. Of course. Are you going in? Naturally. Uh. Get sir. It makes one wonder what the country's coming to. No stamina. A mere 130 degrees. <laughs> ah, well, it's what I've always said, Forbes. Any man can look a gentleman in a frock coat, but it takes breed to make a man look a gentleman in a bar. Nothing personal, your remark, I hope, at all. My dear <laughs> fellow. You come here often? Oh, yes. I have a regular habit to. The hotter it is, the better I like it. Well, in that case, this may be more to your taste. Huh? Something wrong down here this morning, Forbes. This is supposed to register 180 degrees. Ah, doesn't feel like it. No, it don't do it. What does it? Blimey. Warmish? Oh, not so you notice it. <laughs> How's your son getting on? Well, he's been a bit of a surprise to me, that boy. No, really? I mean, say, after all, he is your son. Of course, a man like you... Um... Well, of course, there's that, you know. <laughs> yes. Writing any more music lately? Oh, yes, he's... he's getting on with something. Oh, anything interesting? He's talking about a tango. Oh, what's he calling it? Dolores. Dolores, eh? <laughs> Pretty name. Yes, isn't it? Feel like going on? Oh, I suppose so. Uh, oh, yes, of course, Father. Too much for you? Of course not. Ha! Huh. 240, and well up this morning by the feel of it. Hmm. This is the nicest room in the place, I always think. So do I. Hey, Joe, you're in a sweat. <laughs> you're a lucky devil, Forbes. I wish I could sweat like that. You're welcome. <laughs> hey, catch up. Somebody was right when he said that the Battle of Porto... <laughs> You feeling what? uncomfortable, Forbes? No, no, no. I was just wondering. What about strolling out and getting a drink? I have one in here. I'll send for the waiter. Oh no, we, we don't want to uh, bother him. Bother him? Why? Damn it! The fellow's here to be bothered. Here, you can't go in there. Why not? Well, you can't go in there unless you're improperly undressed. We're from Scotland Yard. Oh, we're after Otto Forbes. He's inside, isn't he? Yes, Sorry to butt in on you, Mr. Forbes. That's all right. Now, Mr. Forbes, perhaps you'd like to tell us something about this. Clove situation perilous. Have discovered hidden reserves, equal year supply. Advise sell before market breaks. Calendar. Where'd you get this? Your secretary said she wrote it in fun. Oh, of course. Great sense of humor, my secretary. Sense of humor, eh? Perhaps she's been spreading all these tales about clothes. And perhaps you don't know anything about it. Well, there have been a certain amount of rumors. Perhaps she wrote those in fun, too, in order to mislead the public and make them sell. 
while Forbes' profits go up and up and up. Do you ever see this up and see this in my office? I thought it was genuine. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. You've broken out into a perspiration at last. You oughtn't to come in these hot rooms, you know. Well, give us a story now, Mr. Forbes. Yeah, but not in here. You fellas will never stand the heat. I'm ruined. Ruined? You're absolutely sunk. But it's no use getting carried away by the heat of the moment. Ruined? No, there's still a chance, Sir Charles. Still a chance. Music. Forbes sound. It came to me in a flash, red hot. Yes? I, I... Excuse me. Now what about this story, Mr. Forbes? That's all I've got to say. Good day. It's our only hope. Be nice to him. Appeal to his vanity. Be nice to Forbes. Just invite him. Invite the best people. And whatever you do, don't forget the sun. Oh, my dear Lady Tuva. Oh, Mr. Forbes. And your charming daughter. How do you do, Lady Tuva? Have we met? Oh, may I present my secretary, Miss Mason, Lady Tuva. Oh, yes, of course, I remember now. We met in the office, didn't we? Uh, yes, that was such an informal introduction. I always think a former one makes all the difference. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you seem to be enjoying yourself tonight, Paul. I'm having the time of my life. <laughs> well, you're in such demand that I suggest you give the whole room the benefit of your remarks. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I am proud to have with us tonight my old friend Forbes. We all know him as an outstanding man of affairs. But only he knows the artistic pleasure that comes of having a son like this rising young composer, whose music we are soon to hear. And I suggest that he gives us a few remarks to commemorate this truly happy occasion. <laughs> Belords, ladies and gentlemen, I didn't come here prepared to make a speech. No. Uh, my son's sensational triumph is a source of peculiar gratification to me, because if I may say so, music has always been in the blood of the Forbes. In fact, I was known amongst my friends as golden-voiced Otto. But that was all a long time ago. Though I dare say I could still make some of the young and sit up if it came to it. Well, why don't you, Forbes? Give us a taste of the old quality. Oh, no, no, no. You didn't come here to hear me? Go on, Mr. Forbes. Well, I didn't anticipate this, you know. Still, by a curious coincidence, I did happen to bring a piece of music with me. Must have been false of habit. Well, I'll see if the orchestra will play it for you. Oh. It's a bit different from the last time I came in here. Do you remember? Do I not? First time I was kicked out, now I'm invited back as a guest. And it doesn't strike you as peculiar. Why should it? I stand in a land of roses, but I dream of a land of snow. While you and I were happy in the years of long ago.
I think your father's wondering where you are, Jimmy. Oh, thank you. Uh, Jane, are you coming? Yes. Uh, in a moment. I want a word with Jane. Well, I want a word with you, too. Is there anything funny going on here tonight? From the way you were sitting about with that young man, I should think there's something very unpleasant going on. I like Jimmy Forbes. Oh, uh, am I interrupting? Not at all. Come in, Naismith. Kindly remember what I've said. And kindly remember what I've asked. Lillian. I didn't expect to see you here. Why have you neglected me the last few days? You're a nice boy, Billy, but you're the sort of man I soon get tired of. Oh, you only pretended that you liked me. Oh, well, if you like to put it that way. Oh, Rex. Yes, miss? Send Lillian up to my room at once, please. Very good, miss. Now, what about a little drink? You've had two or three, Mr. Forbes. Well, this is a big occasion for me, you know. And my boy. Well, here's Joy. Why have you been visiting Mr. Todd's studio? Well, a girl must do something for amusement. Yes, but supposing Forbes refuses to cancel this clove deal? He won't with the evidence that's in your face. Oh, that evidence isn't criminal, it's only a piece of music. A piece of music that will expose his son as a fraud. Well, your father's going to expose Forbes, and he's got the evidence. What evidence? The original tango with Billy Todd's name on it. Where is it? That's all right, I haven't got it on me. Where is it? It's in your father's safe. So now you know as much as I do. I say, we, we can't let old Rimmer get away with this. But how can we stop him, sir? Well, the first thing to do is to tell your father the truth. What? Tell him the truth? Yes, all of it. Oh, but, but I, I... Ah, here we are, Jimmy. Come along. I just got to play Dolores. And they want to see you. Oh, no, Dad, I... Oh, yes. You must get used to facing the public. He'll have a lot of that sort of thing in the future, won't he? Parsons, well, you tell him. You see, sir, it's like this. You can tell I, me later. I... Ah, Forbes, bring us on over here. We're just going to start. Uh, Father's just going to have a little chat with Parsons. Yes, oh? confidential chat. So he'll follow me if you go on What is all this? There, there's something you must hear, sir. All oh, this is a trap. Oh, what? This, this party, sir. This is this music. I know all about it. Indeed. And soon everybody else will know all about it, too. You're going to make the band play Jimmy's music. And you know he didn't write it. Well, what do you say to that? I'm afraid there isn't very much I can say. My son done that, did he? I was desperate, sir. What do you think I am? Rimmer's going to make a fool of me in front of all these people. Me, one of the candidates for the next election. Am I to understand that you deliberately tried to deceive me? Oh, no, not you. I... Uh... Exactly. I thought even you wouldn't descend to that. You're behind all this, aren't you? you done this. you put my boy up to this. Oh, I can make amends, sir. I swear I can put things right. What? We must get hold of that evidence, and I know how to get it. How? Oh, I can't tell you, sir, but I can show you. Please, come this way. Please, I'm sorry. Please. I can promise you a great surprise. I'm looking forward to seeing the name of Forbes on the front page of every newspaper in the country. Well, no, 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 don't ask me what it is. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. We are about to be regaled by a composition of music by Mr. Otto Forbes' clever son. This is the first public performance of a tango entitled Dolores. Jimmy, come here a minute. I want to talk to you. Yes. I'd like to see Forbes' face when he knows what you've got for him in your safe. Just this little door between us and disaster. About three inches of solid steel. A mere nothing to me, sir. But you can't open that. I have a certain skill in these matters. Oh, have you? Yes, sir. But... Come on, Jimmy. Pull yourself together. Make an effort. Let Father see you're not as big a fool as you look. My unfair spark is sweet Dolores of Spain. I am longing to see you just once again. Come to me in the starlight. Fond arms entwine you in a passionate kiss. Your embraces inspire me with a heavenly bliss. For true love now is waiting, let it not be. Try 
Yes. Right. That's a bit of music. music. Good. Delores by Bill Todd. That's that talk. Go on, shove that away. Very good, sir. Here. Just a minute. Good love a Let my fond arms entwine you in a passionate way. Your embraces inspire me with hate. Sweet lady of Spain. Yes. Oh, you're in here for perhaps as well, eh, nice man? Couldn't be better, Sir Charles. Well, it's nice to know that everybody's happy. What a pity you weren't out there when they were playing your son's latest tango. We gave the reporters an earful, didn't we, Sir Charles? I should look forward to reading the papers. Perhaps you'd better first read something that I have in my safe. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm most pleased you like Dolores. Dolores was written by a young English composer with a very English name. And you'd better realize that you're in my hands, Forbes. I can expose you. I can make you the laughing stock of the country. That is, of course, if Forbes makes it necessary, Sir Charles. But, um... We have a compromise to suggest. Sounds like a bit of dirty work. Well, let's have a look at the document to start with. Come on, let's have a look at it. It isn't here. Dear, dear, dear. Well, you don't mean to say you've lost it? I got you here tonight under false pretenses, but I'm not apologizing, because it has brought to your notice Mr. Billy Todd at the piano. Yes, he composed the music, not me. I couldn't compose the recipe for a Christmas pudding. <laughs> I don't know the difference between a semi-quaver and a semi-colon. Billy, stand up and take a bow. You're quite sure you put it in the safe? Do you think I'm such a fool as to leave an important thing like that lying about? Well, what about this bundle of selling contracts for clothes? They were lying about. Or don't you consider them important? Jane, I've done it. Yes, darling, I heard you. Now for father. Oh. When you fail to meet your obligations over this cloak business, this house will be mine and everything in it. Now, Sir Charles, before you start your exposing business, perhaps you'd like to know that I've beaten you to it. And perhaps you'd also like to know that I've asked Jane to marry me. Oh, impossible, unthinkable. And she's promised to do it whether you two like it or not. I refuse to submit... That'll be all right, Rimmer. Now, look here. What about a nice little wedding present for them? What do you say to this house and its contents? What's that? Just as a little souvenir of our clothes deal. Do you agree? Now, look here, Forbes. And that's settled. Oh, by the way, if you'd like to take your father in as a lodger, it's okay by me. 